And I remember beforehand, I was so nervous. I felt like I put so much pressure on myself. And it was just in front of my classmates, like 20 people and my professor. But I just remember starting the scene and then just it ended. Like it's like I blacked out in between. And I specifically remember my, my teacher, he's my favorite teacher. He was just at the end, he was like, whoa, intense scene guys. Like, how you feeling? And I'm like, I don't know, my hands are tingling. Like, I don't remember what just happened. <laughs> like, wow, man. <laughs> it was that high of just like, like letting go, like Zen, just mm. being in it, being so present that you're not consciously aware of like, oh, people are looking at me. What's my next line? And you're just in that flow state. I think for all artists, whether it's comedians, musicians, actors, like no matter what, like painters, no matter what it is, when you get into that flow state, it is the best drug in the world. And it's like, you can't, you can't describe it. It just happened. Nice little beard hat. It's getting thick, Thanks, bro. It's really coming in, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's impressive. It's like, four. I like, it's like it. we're going in order here. Like, like Johnny's clean. I got a bit. Sean's got a bit more. And then Patty's like, <laughs> yeah. 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 progression of a beard. Yeah. Uh, progression <laughs> of beard growth is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, shit. Oh, I got to say um, to anyone that's watching this, if you live in Ottawa, I've got Comedy and Tacos. Next show is October 21st. Um, so make sure you get tickets for that. And best way to help the show is hit that subscribe button. Other than that, this is episode 104, guys. We did it. Four yeah. Northmen. Yeah. Oh, four. Let's go. I love it when numbers come together. Yeah. Congrats <laughs> on uh, the 100 plus episodes, Johnny. I know podcasting awesome, is... It's I get a word for it. There's times you want to quit. <laughs> yeah. There's dude. times it's like, what am I doing with my life? And then there's times of victory and you're still going, man. And it's fucking awesome. And I love uh how the platform continues to grow and you've really leaned into like talking to comedians and stuff like that. And it's just awesome, man. Yeah, I started to realize more and more. I was like, well, part of it was because having a comedian on or an actor or a musician, they have a headshot. So it makes the promo super easy to <laughs> thinking about those thumbnails. The, the amount of people that don't have one nice photo of themselves kicking Which around. It's you know? interesting because of LinkedIn, everyone, everyone has like a LinkedIn shot nowadays, you know? Yeah, yeah. I got to go deep into people's LinkedIn, I guess, to do that. But no, man, I, like after talking to um, Vince Tedesco, who was on the episode before this, um, I was like, yeah, we really do need more podcast specific um, like platforms where c comedians in Canada can actually get some shine and like get some name. Like if, if I have a bunch of people on this show becomes like the way I want it to become, I would love for like a comedian that no one's heard of, but I love to come on the show. And then all of a sudden they gain like a good little following from it. You yeah, know, and people are coming into the show. It's like, oh, I saw you on this podcast or I saw you on this podcast. And like, that'd be a dream. Mm -hmm. yeah it's cool and even like now i think it's awesome too because you're exposing like your circle of people who follow what you do to new things and stuff like that and i actually got like a nice uh message from our old friend amanda mcknight about my show as well too she's like oh you're exposing me to like some cool shit i've never heard of like on like yeah. music and film side so even like though we don't have the massive audiences. It's still like reaching to people. And I think that's very important and uh, cool. And like, if you keep at it, like it's just going to continue to grow as it's been doing. And yeah, like it definitely can reach that, that state that you're, you want it to be where you're mm -hmm. just exposing all this new talent uh, on like a different level. And like, you can definitely be that guy. Cause like you said, there's not many shows like this for commit or Canadian comedians as well. There's like a lot of like focus on the U S and everything. Yep. And yeah, somebody's well, got to be the guy, like Johnny. Highly everything. Also like anything you see a Canadian comedian in, it's like highly edited, highly produced. They've been selected after going through countless right. auditions. And it's like, just because you haven't been through that process doesn't mean you don't deserve the same chance to like 100%. find your audience. Like somebody like black Zeus, for example, is like, he's not the guy that's going to bend the knee to like any, corporation or any like uh thing that wants to put him on like oh you you have to tone it down like we don't want you to do like don't be as black with your comedy you know like you say the n-word too much on stage like I, I saw him on instagram like ranting about this he's like which is it like you want you want to push people of color <laughs> but like the people of color that you want you know what i mean like he, yeah. he, he's like just so like like i get baffled by that kind of area of the industry and it's like mm -hmm. yeah 
you just need like I'm not asking anything of him and he's not asking anything of me. We're just like sharing conversation. I think that's uh, the really cool thing about you building your own platform is, is exactly that you can, you can have, you can have whoever the hell you want on, right? Like yeah. even, even if people maybe think that they're uh, problematic or whatever. <laughs> and, and I think, um, it's my favorite you know, people. I, I, I totally agree. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. Gonna say, they they always the turn out to be the best in comedy, yeah, yeah, especially, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think Sean is right too. Like you're, you're only going to snowball from here. Like, you know, a hundred episodes is, uh, it was strong evidence of your commitment and any big podcast show that you see, they're always on like, ep- here's episode 637. Yeah. 1034. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 It's crazy. I was saying that about um, YKWD, which is Robert Kelly's podcast. Like I knew he had been like, I knew him as a comedian and I knew he'd been in a bunch of stuff, but then I found his podcast and I, I didn't discover it until he was on like episode 700. Mm-hmm. So like, if he didn't just keep going, like never would have heard about it. Because there wouldn't have right. been a podcast, you know, like a hundred percent. I find stuff very interesting. You know what? I mean, it, it it's the same with like, you know, a YouTube channel, you know, people post like a hundred videos, they get 10 views, 15 views. People are like, what are you doing? You got to give up. But then it's like that one video pops and then everyone sees all your other shit. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's such a cliche, but like the saying of just never give up. Cause at some point, you know, it's going to hit. Yeah. Or you'll I, die. I feel like there's the twofold. Like, <laughs> yeah, in, yeah in, <laughs> one or the I other, said, right? Yeah, then you can I still hit after to you're dead, too. I said that to Pat, <laughs> but when I was making music, I was like, dude, no one's going to understand any of this shit until I've been dead for years. Like, <laughs> Yeah, then they'll appreciate it. Then they'll pick Bro. through the lyrics and be like, <laughs> oh. It's literally my mentality as an actor. Everyone's like, oh, like, you know, at what age are you going to just like pivot and try something else? And I'm like, I'm not. Like, as long as I keep going, I know I have a chance and then I'll die. Yeah, and if I if you I can't didn't win the lottery, it, if you don't buy a ticket, yeah, I'm like if I don't make it as an actor because I'm dead, then I don't have any regrets. But if I keep fucking going, eventually it's gonna happen, or I'll die. Well, one of the other is gonna happen. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. the two guarantees. Like it's just. And it's if you're morbid, dead, you never true, know bro. that you didn't make it. That's what I mean. So it's a win-win, bro. It's all gravy. Yeah. <laughs> it, do you usually like, not make yeah. it? You know, you don't make it if you quit. That's considered <laughs> exactly. not making exactly. it, right? If you quit, then you never made it. Bro, I got the rock right here. It says winners never quit, quitters never win. <laughs> nice. The rock, yes. The rock says. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Even oh, I man. think it's like important to still do like these smaller projects that nobody sees, whether it's like me and Johnny doing an episode that gets like five clicks, or you doing like maybe like a commercial or like man, some like bro. indie film or whatever. Cause at the same time, like you're keeping your sword sharp. And when the opportunity for a bigger thing comes, you're going to be ready. You're already warmed up for it. You know, there's some yeah. people, they have the mentality where they only want to do like the hits and they're just waiting and they're not practicing their fucking craft 100%. and they get rusty or whatever. So, I mean, how many yeah. comedians just like show up to the comedy store on a fucking Wednesday night when people are paying 20 bucks a ticket? Yeah. Like, we're talking like, you know, Chris Some Rock, of the best Chappelle, in the world. Like, yeah, yeah. guys watched, are selling stadiums. I watched Drog Carmichael like at his peak read out of a notebook at the comedy store on a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, this guy oh, has, a, this guy has an HBO special. Do you know what I mean? Like he like by all regards, you would think that he would never do this. And here he is like, hmm, what's next? Like flip. You could hear the paper flipping. <laughs> you know, like he's like he's looking down. <laughs> he's really just like so he's calm. Like, I'm going to find something tonight. Oh, man. This is what I got to do. Even I got one thing like I got a show tomorrow and like I'm literally going into the show with some like brief ideas of what I want to talk about. I'm not going to do my prepared set at all because I'm like, it's a Tuesday show. They're going to give me 10 minutes. Yeah. It's at like a college pub. Like, I don't care. And especially, Fuck this is the funny kids. thing. <laughs> Fuck these kids. <laughs> Fuck them kids. <laughs> no, because the last time I did that show, I did my like sex insurance joke. And I was like, soon as I mentioned insurance, I saw the look of like confusion on a lot of these kids' faces. And I was like, oh, they've never paid insurance. They don't, they don't know what insurance what is. The fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. And that was my closing bit. So I'm just leaving them oh, confused. <laughs> I love I love seeing live stand up and like a uh, joke doesn't land and the comedian just recognizes it and they go, hmm, OK, I'll take that one out next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, great. Like that's the thing with comedy. Like you don't know until you try. Right. 100 percent, man. And otherwise, yeah. you're just going to be tormenting yourself thinking like, would it have worked? Wouldn't it have worked? Like 100 percent. I love that's that also the sign of, of like a really good comedian, too. I notice uh, I guess some people who are more amateur, they'll start 
coming up with excuses, blaming the crowd, and like, yeah, oh, it's it's not me. It's like they <laughs> I, didn't understand. I, oh, trust me, this is funny. <laughs> I recently went to a comedy show, and one of the openers, I'm not going to say who it was, but he did perform at JFL, and apparently, like, he's American. Apparently, he's great. He just say it. I'll bleep it, it out. No, I'm just kidding. You no, know, it was at. Um, <laughs> Put it in the chat. <laughs> I, I mean, I'll tell you after. But okay, okay, okay. Like the the host was funny, and then I'm pretty sure. No, it was the host, then him, then a woman, and then the headliner. And the host was getting some laughs. He goes up, and, like, his jokes just weren't landing. Mm. And this guy really goes, like, everyone here okay? Like, it's a comedy show. It's okay to laugh. Like, I don't, like, what's wrong with everybody here? And in my head, I'm like, bro, like, when you're telling jokes and people aren't laughing, they're not the problem. (laughs) And And then the girl comes up, and she fucking kills it. And I'm like... So clearly, you know, you were doing something wrong here. Dude, like, that was literally damn, me man. at the last like comedy and taco show because I was hosting it, and like it's um it's a restaurant right that I've converted into a, a comedy club for the evening, and so yeah. I'm like I'm in producer mode. I'm in right. like event planning Johnny mode. So I'm like, okay, like do the seats look good? Like how's the lighting? Like how's the mic sound? Like you know, are those people coming through the door? Did they pay? Meanwhile, I'm I'm like thinking all that while I'm standing on stage trying to host <laughs> and be funny, oh, right? Man. Like I'm the first comedian that they're seeing of yeah. the night. And I also greeted them at the door and like took their ticket and shit. So it's very like weird, right? Like I have to like do it a few more times before I get in the rhythm of like, okay, now switch to comedy brain, like just focus on right. jokes. But like I literally was doing that being like, you guys can like loosen your assholes. Like this is a comedy show. Like I'm going to swear. I'm going to make you uncomfortable. I'm going to say some things you don't like. I don't care what you think. Like I, I flip from being like this welcoming host to be like, you guys, <laughs> a piece of shit. listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And then just like, and then, um, uh, I, w- one of the other comedians came up and like did his thing. And then, uh, I thought I would like lean into it even more. And I was just like, I had, t- I had timed him. Right. And I was like, Seven minutes. That's how long he lasted before he wanted to get away from you guys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then afterwards he goes, "I'm sorry, man. Was I supposed to do more time?" I was like, "Oh no, 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 no! I was just fucking with you. Like that. I don't care about that at all." I was like, "See, the thing I'm doing right now is being really mean to the crowd, and I'm actually doubling down. It's not working, but I'm gonna keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I already committed because I've already built this character of I'm the villain of the show right now. Mm-hmm. Like you know, I want I'm, them to I'm be upset when myself. I come back up. Yeah, yeah." <laughs> <laughs> I'm sacrificing myself for all you guys. So just don't let my name die in and vain. All the okay. other comedians killed. They crushed it. Like they did their their club sets. They tried some new things. They all did great. And I was just like, here we go, back up to bomb again for these fucking people. <laughs> That's brave. <laughs> oh god. Sometimes comedy's like that though. Like sometimes you like make the wrong choice and then you're like, I could either 180 this or just double down. Yeah. And sometimes doubling down works. Sometimes it doesn't work. There's always another show, you know what I mean? So it's like, it, man. It's, you know, water off a duck's back. Uh, yeah, I feel like as an actor, it's the same thing with an audition. Like, I've done auditions where I'm like, fuck, I bombed that one. Like, I flubbed mm. a line. Like, I did this, I did that. And then it's like, oh, just got another one. And you just don't carry it with you. Because it's like, <laughs> yeah, what, yeah, yeah. what benefit do I get from that? So, yeah, man, I, I hear you. I'm, uh, I've been, like, floating with the idea of taking a stand-up class. It scares the shit out of me, man. But do it. I want to just why you should something. do it. Yeah. It's just fuck, man. I feel like I get so nervous on stage. And like, I do that for work. I'm on stage in front of people. It's not that I have an issue public speaking, but just the pressure of like having to tell this funny. (laughs) Yeah, man. And it's like, it's not like a minute or two. Like people don't realize 10 minutes on stage is like a year and a half, man. Yeah. It fucking lasts. (laughs) Slows down. (laughs) Bullet time. Really, man. It's like, it's like Neo dodging the bullets. (laughs) It's like shit in (laughs) slow-mo. The worst was when I didn't have like a lot of jokes when when you start and then someone gives you like a 10 minute spot and you do everything you have. Yeah. And you're like, how much time is left? There's still four minutes left. Like, I can't <laughs> fill four minutes. Like, so how's everyone's day? <laughs> <laughs> you just start shutting down. And you're just like, oh, God. No, man, oh, I'm doing man. it like 12 years and I still like get super nervous before I go on stage. No matter like how big or small the show is, I'm just yeah. like, oh, I hope they like it. Like that's that's all you want, right? You just want that little bit of like validation that what you're saying is funny or they're making them think whatever the intention is behind the joke. But 
friends are a good gauge to find out if something is like truly funny or not you know Mm-hmm. I think a lot of really um, like talented comedians and stuff to say that that doesn't really go away. The like pre-show jitters. It's like you could be, you know, like like top five comedians in the world and you're about to go do a stadium and you're probably backstage like, oh, man, I don't know if that bit about the old lady is really funny. Like, I should, maybe I should leave that out. But man, Robin Williams, even into his like Robin Williams and um, Steve Martin also into their peak when they were doing like arenas and fucking, or I don't know if they were doing arenas, but theater, big theaters, whatever. Um, they would always, I heard stories of them asking the, you know, talent coordinator or booker, like, are there people out there? Like they were still like, it, yeah. there's, there's a good crowd, right? Like, yeah, it's oh, packed. Man. Like it's sold out to the fucking brim <laughs> because you are who you are, you know? And they'd still are stuck in that mindset mm-hmm. of just being like, I hope they're going to like it. Like, I hope there's people out there. Man, apparently, like, Barbara Streisand had the worst stage fright. Like, that's she barely ever performed because she's like, I can't do it. Like, wow. I, she would get that nervous. And she's, wow. like, you know, considered she's a powerhouse. She's like one of the best. She and I was one too, like, stopped performing for many years because she would get stage fright. Bo Burnham took a lot of years off because he had a, an anxiety attack in Edinburgh. He couldn't handle it. He was like, I, I can't even go out there. I have to cancel this show. He's right there. He's right about to go out. And he was like, I'm going to have a panic attack. Yeah. Johnny, I don't know if you ever felt like this, but uh, in the couple of years that I dabbled in comedy, I remember like one of my best sets ever prior to it. I was in the bathroom, almost like going to throw up. I was thinking of like running away. There was like I thought it was going to be the small thing in front of like 20 people. There was like uh, 100 people in this room and like I just hear them all chattering. And I was just like, I practiced my material so much that it didn't become funny in my head anymore. Mm, yeah, like, this yeah. is not good. This is not good. And I was having a panic attack and I went out and I said my first line. They all laughed. And then all of a sudden, like a schizophrenic, my brain just flipped and I'm like, oh, I'm not even at the good part yet. And I'm just like, relax. I'm like, let's go. Riding the wave, it was yeah. just such like a moment where I just felt like the biggest manic person where I was about to run away. And then the next thing you know, it's like within a second from the reaction from the crowd, I um I just turned into the most confident I ever been in my entire life, and yeah, dude. it just went on this wave. And it's it's crazy how you can get into your own head, and it goes again. Like you mentioned, like Barbara Streisand and Shania Twain, all these the best people, like ha- still having these nerves, you know, and they're killing it out there. But they're still like that human anxiety that's yeah. like within us the they doubt. come back though they always come back to it because the drug of killing is undeniable like <laughs> yeah. when you hit a big laugh and you feel that fucking energy in that room because of what you just said and you like you said you know there's still more in the tank that is just going to send them over like yeah. it makes yeah, you're you like this is the setup <laughs> <laughs> you feel like you're floating you're just like you this see nothing yet unreal yeah. like it is a wildly addictive feeling for sure. Just because of how nervous you are to begin with, the lowest you've ever felt, you're like, this is going to be horrible. And then it's the greatest thing that's ever happened. So like that stark contrast between yeah. those two things, that feeling in the middle is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I could only relate it back to acting, but like, I remember it, even in class, like one of the best, I mean, it's, it is class, but like, like at college we're talking about. Um, but have you guys seen the movie filth? James McAvoy? No. No. I remember the title. I don't think I've watched it. Oh, it was, you guys should definitely watch. That was a crazy movie. So I was doing a scene from Filth. And I remember beforehand, I was so nervous. I felt like I put so much pressure on myself. And it was just in front of my classmates, like 20 people and my professor. But I just remember starting the scene and then just it ended. Like it's like I blacked out in between. And mm. I specifically remember my my teacher, who's my favorite teacher, he was just at the end, he was like, Whoa, intense scene, guys. Like, how you feeling? And I'm like, I don't know. My hands are tingling. Like, I don't really remember what just happened. <laughs> like, wow, man. <laughs> it was that high of just like, like letting go, like Zen, just mm. being in it, being so present that you're not consciously aware of like, oh, people are looking at me. What's my next line? And you're just in that flow state. I think for all artists, whether it's comedians, musicians, actors, like no matter what, like painters, no matter what it is, when you get into that flow state, it is the best drug in the world. And it's like, you can't, you can't describe it it just happens and then you just come back to it's mm-hmm. like you're possessed it's fucking crazy yeah you can get so the same crazy. feeling from video games 
-hmm. Like if you were just crushing it at a game or a sport or whatever yeah. too and you're just like I, dude i've had call of duty matches where i'm like i'm in the fucking flow yeah. state bro <laughs> yeah. like yeah i'm doing the like world doesn't three... exist around you it's just no, brain and yeah, fucking yeah. brain to game you're like I'm doing 360 no scopes like <laughs> dude what, what was that when, term the headshot. fortnite term the, oh moab the, the 90s oh, cranking 90s <laughs> yeah there we go <laughs> yeah I'm Man, I was, you know, w- when you started talking about the flow state, Jared, I was going to basically go the same place Johnny went. Like, are you playing a game like Call of Duty or even, fuck, it doesn't even matter, like Pac-Man, Asteroids, it doesn't matter. And especially, though, anything where you can die really easily, like yeah. Call of Duty, you, you get into that state and you're just, it is like you're... um it's like you're not quite there and then yeah. when you when you get killed you kind of snap back and i find i've i've had a lot of experiences where i'm like absolutely killing in a game and then i notice and you think oh That's dude me. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm icing everybody right now and then just boom <laughs> instantly you, yep. you lost it bro yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i get like, like that with ah. fighting games like I'll yeah you can't like analyze yourself like, while yeah, you're yeah. playing no mm-hmm. you get two in your head and that's when you start questioning your decisions when you just go with it yeah it's like, yeah, man, it's it's like literally my acting coach has like a breakdown. I don't want to like give away a secret from class, but he has this like 10 step script analysis of breaking down a script and understanding everything. And he's like, after you do all the work, number 10 fuck it. You just like let it go and surrender. Because if you take that in with you to the audition and you're thinking like, oh, why am I saying this line? Why am I doing this? While you're right. doing the audition, you're in your head. You've already lost. If right. you just say fuck it and I just trust myself and you just go with the process. That's when the magic happens. So yeah, dude. Yeah. The second I was actually, circuit, uh, no. Yeah. Oh, sorry to cut you. Oh off. no, no, go ahead. No, my, no my I was just uh, <laughs> gonna say, kind of like relating to video <laughs> games and acting. Um, I just talked to this voice actress. Uh, I haven't posted the episode yet. It's gonna be next week. Her name's uh Jessica Strauss, and she's been doing video game acting since the '90s, like Diablo two. And I, re- I reached out to her because I saw her on Twitter, and she's actually the voice of my Street Fighter character right now. What? She said yes, <laughs> and uh, we had this amazing conversation. But she was talking about like what you were just saying, Jared, of just that state of letting go and her acting as this character. It's been one of my favorite things in video games for like the past 10 years. The character's called Jury and it's just this unhinged woman who just doesn't give a fuck. And she says it's so easy to like kind of just let go because you when you get into that character it almost enhances her feeling of letting go because the character is uh, letting go yeah. and it's just kind of Man. both her skill and the character coming together makes this magic that's uh i don't know like even before i knew this voice actress name i was like yo the this character is like so intriguing and hilarious and like it's so cool to like kind of like hear you say that about oh, like dude. just kind of letting go jared too because Man. like one of the pros like was just saying that like last week as well yeah no it's 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 wild bro but i've tried to do that, that with comedy i've tried dude. to like become um like not me on stage like i am with you guys but like this oh uh, this confident i don't give a fuck like Man. character on stage right you know like i don't like i'm gonna just deliver my point with absolute like this is what i believe yeah. even though i'm like yeah. i don't really believe that this is what yeah. i believe <laughs> you know like, it, it's it's almost like a bit of that fake it till you make it kind of thing yeah 100 percent. Right? when i uh yeah. w- when i first started supervising at starbucks i was like so intimidated to be in any kind of a leadership position and i and i i carried that kind of energy into the job of just like i know what i'm doing i'm i'm, I'm gonna just pitch all the time like okay guys we're, we're doing this and we're doing that and and just like inside i'm like fuck i don't know if any of these decisions even make sense yeah. but <laughs> or, are they, they, or are they gonna yeah. listen to me like there's yeah, that yeah. too right Google but then minor, you get yeah. the result and you almost like legitimizes your 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 act yeah mm-hmm. yeah, yeah 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 totally something uh because like you know for people that don't know i work as an mc i do a lot of you know, events, a lot of bar and bat mitzvahs, but do other stuff too. And uh, <laughs> I'm training, I'm, I'm training Shabbat somebody. Shaloms, you know? Yeah, a lot of, uh, <laughs> lot of muzzle tubs. Um, but I'm training this kid and I'm like, I'm like, man, like you just care too much. I'm like, you just can't give a fuck. And that doesn't mean you go on stage and you're just like, fuck all of you. But it's like, <laughs> like what I did. <laughs> when you, <laughs> no, but like when you just don't, when you don't care. And when I say don't care, it's like, you don't put the pressure on yourself of 
you know, why are people not having a good time? Why are people mm -hmm. dancing? Am I an idiot? Am I saying the wrong thing? Are people judging me? Like, why is that person looking at me like that? You just, yeah. you kind of just say like, I don't, like you said, Johnny, like I'm a character. This isn't a reflection of who I actually am as a person. So, you know, my job here is to make sure everyone has a good time partying. I'll make an ass of myself just to make sure they have a good time mm -hmm, and not right. thinking like, oh, but people are going to like, like think of me like that as who I really am. Because when I'm talking to, you know, the client, like the parents or the kid or, you know, whoever it is beforehand, you know, they get to re meet the real me and then they mm -hmm. see me on stage. And it's like, again, I become this character that's t totally different than who I am talking to you guys right now. Yeah. And I think that's what makes the best performers in general, people that could kind of separate the artist from themselves as, as a person. And a lot of people can't do that. And, you know, that's my, right. We stand well. with like, you, R. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> separate the art yeah. from the artist. Yeah, no, oh, top, my top three right now are probably Bill Cosby, uh, R. Kelly, and, <laughs> and Michael Jackson. Like, I just, yeah. the three of them are my, like, Let's Spotify go. wrapped. Just... Holy shit. <laughs> that's hilarious. But, um, yeah, yeah, no, sorry it's, to cut you off. It's, it's, no, no, that's it. Like, it's just, it's tough to, to take a step back and kind of, like, separate yourself from your profession or artistry or whatever you want to call it. But that truly is the most, uh, I guess, freeing and, and liberating is, is what I'm trying to get at. And I'm still trying to perfect that. Don't get me wrong. Like I do a lot of auditions. I act all the time where I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Like mm. people got to think of me this way. Like right. you, just, you can't, you can't take your personal shit with you uh, as an entertainer. And again, and, easier said than done. We're human. And creativity yeah, and confidence, like creativity is fucked in the way that it, uh, it ebbs and flows with its successes and failures, because that's why you have to just kind of like everything that you do, because like confidence will make you believe that you're the most creative person. <laughs> right and oh, then you get saying. negative feedback and you go yeah, like, maybe yeah. i'm not and then it throws everything into question like because i've been doing comedy since i was 19 like it was like my identity like it was if i had a bad show yeah. i felt like a failure not mm. that just the jokes were bad but i felt like oh i fucked up like right i made the wrong life decision you know it, it became so like crazy yeah. outside but now that i have like an actual adult cool job that you know in 40 hours a week whatever i have this like air of confidence now when i go to do comedy where i'm like this doesn't really matter like i'm i'm, I'm purely doing this because i find it fun like right. before i was doing it to build confidence and and to build a career and, and what have you but like now i'm like oh now i'm just gonna play now that now when i'm away from that thing Say i'm just gonna man. play and if it's a bad show it doesn't matter i'm still gonna step into a hundred thousand dollar car tomorrow you know what I mean? Like <laughs> I have this like sick fire job on the side that I'm just like, whatever, man. Like, and that's the attitude that I think you have to have towards creativity is you can't, or any like passion that you're pursuing, you can't, you can't make it your it. world, yeah. man. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. I think you have to find a way to whatever the way is like for you, it's, it's having that thing. But I think any creative, you have to find a way to not, you can't be afraid of a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Like you can't be afraid to tell a joke that's just going to totally fall flat. And, and I feel like it's easy for any, anybody like as a human being to you, you like say in comedy or, or even the car sales, you, you fail, you fail to sell someone on the car. It's really easy to spiral from like, God, I'm so bad at this job. I'm bad at talking to people. Like mm -hmm. I shouldn't have even gotten into being a salesman. Like I'm, yeah. I'm an idiot. I always yeah, make yeah, the wrong yeah. decision. And you just like turn Spiral, into this man. huge catastrophe, right? <laughs> and and it's so it's so much easier to say, eh. No, no you God, win some, you lose some type of thing. Literally, exactly. this is the, this is the way. numbers. It's like, like you have if to. This is the yeah. way. Totally. Like, like Jared, you, you have to. Jared must know that too from like auditions. It's just a law of numbers. Like you do a hundred auditions you're gonna get 98 no's but those two yeses oh, are gonna, i've probably like, gotten turn... like 250 no's <laughs> but like the one yes yeah. you get Fucking turns no, your whole year around you know 100 percent, man and half uh, of those no's probably have nothing to do with you right it's yeah. if somebody else had a connection or something like you can't take it personally a hundred percent dude there's yeah. been so and i've even been on the other side of of like the casting process like now i'm just starting to shoot my own shit and just kind of you know find ways to make it happen without relying on someone to say yes to me and just mm. like i'll give you guys a great example I, I shot this proof of concept a few months ago and we had these two actors and one of the actors was better than the other but the other one sounded more like the type of guy they wanted to cast so they ended up going with the 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 worst act not not worse but like out of the two the lesser of the two right. and 
what like part of me was like oh like because this this one's the better one but this one for whatever reason just matches the vibe or he sounds more like him or looks more like the character that they want so it's not even coming down to his ability as an actor Mm -hmm. there's so many other external variables that have come into consideration so for me to not get a a part and be like i'm a shit actor it's like no i very well could have been the best one but if i'm playing someone's sister and she has brown eyes and i have green eyes it's not gonna work or if i'm bro half the time i do slates which is like name height location i gotta say my height and like if if the person i'm you know starring with or, or co-starring with let's say they're like six three and i'm five nine it's gonna look too shitty on camera so it's like they'd rather just get someone that's like probably six one because it'll be easier mm-hmm. there's so many variables to it that to to think it's just solely based off of skill you'll drive yourself crazy especially with the commercial auditions and these like one-off you know actor roles of just like one or two long, like young lawyer and and like you know doctor's assistant yeah. or it's just like oh, what, what type? number three yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Like, 20 <laughs> 20 type. bucks for a blow job Dead. like you know yeah. it's, it's... <laughs> no i was gonna say ringo star though that's exactly his story like they all of the beatles would admit like ringo's not the best drummer like there's way better oh, no. drummers yeah. than him we right. just got along with him better like, we just were yeah. like he's a cool guy he just like, wasn't an asshole he's cool and he can drum like yeah, he wasn't john yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can you imagine john on drums <laughs> oh man oh fuck even i feel I'm like noticing the, the, oh go I, ahead I, think the, I, I just i think the beatles specifically they had a kind of thing going where they they didn't need a good drummer they needed a guy who could mm-hmm. just keep the rhythm and like mm-hmm. just yes. you know do what they needed like some bands that have really good drummers it's it's awesome and uh some uh some people don't even like you ever you ever like listen to blink 182 and just hone in on the drums yeah, like, yeah, the, yeah. like how how intense it is but yeah, lots of people aren't in. even noticing right and i think mm-hmm. with something like the beatles there was you know they did not need like a like two kick drums or anything no like it was yeah. all about the lyricism and like the catchiness of the hook and like that was all that you really cared yeah. about and like yelling guitar solos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. what were you gonna say sean i kind of cut you off oh i forget but you had a good point there i liked it <laughs> actually i saw a great meme and it said uh if the beatles were so good why weren't they on a uh tony hawk pro skater soundtrack <laughs> <laughs> The soundtracks were sick, <laughs> yeah. dude. The true distinguishing of whether or not, like for me, it was like NHL soundtracks. I was like, mm, "This too, is bro. music." <laughs> you know, <what> I mean? <laughs> <laughs> playing Grand Theft Auto oh, too, flicking through the radio. You're just like, "Oh shit!" You guys oh. hear? Apparently, they're gonna have Rogan as like his podcast as like a radio no. station on on GTA Six or something. No, oh, I feel like it's a rumor. I, I there's no because you have to like license, like Spotify would have to license that, right? I yeah. think what if if they did do that, they'd probably have Joe voice a character based on Joe Rogan and do a couple right. like short like episodes where he's interviewing characters from the game kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, uh, actually, you know what's more likely that they'll probably do with the technology is just get Joe to sign off on an AI, AI doing 100%. his voice, pay him way as less. a conversation. Yeah, yeah, like you don't even need to record anything. We just need your like like your approval yeah, to, right. uh, your approval to use your voice for this in-game character that is mm-hmm. like a version of you we'll call you ro jogan and, and you know what i mean like it'll be <laughs> and then the podcasters <laughs> go on strike too Dude. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Fuck Yo, you know. did you guys um did you guys play gta 4 where you play as the nico bellic he's like yeah, he's, not, he's, he's, he's not russian uh i can't remember uh anyway it doesn't matter point is in that game there's uh they really went ham on the radio shows and stuff like that. You could even watch TV. And uh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you could you could watch on TV or go to comedy shows. And they had they had a Cat Williams set and a Ricky Gervais set. I and remember. It's like, it's like a like five minute set. Like I remember sitting down on the couch in the apartment as Nico, like watching this thing <laughs> on TV. And I'm like, and I'm like, this guy sounds familiar. And finally, it like dawned on me that it was Ricky Gervais. It was like such a mind blower. And I mean, the graphics weren't even that awesome at the time, but that that kind of stuff is really cool. Yeah. 
even I remember the original GTAs uh, back in my day when I used to play PC <laughs> games in the fucking nineties. <laughs> they didn't have any licensing the music, but they still like took like a hilarious route of having like a rock station, a rap station, a country station, a talk yeah. radio, and then they just made like their own parody songs of like That's so all funny. this different <laughs> shit, and it was just hilarious just to flip through the stations. I'm like, yo, so they really go in with that easter egg stuff that a lot of people could miss but it's just embedded in the games which i always appreciate yeah man even in the first uh well i call it the first but it's not gta 3 like the first 3d gta uh that i think was the first one where the radio would there'd be like weasel news and it would talk about whatever big thing just happened in the game. Like you just did a story mission where you blew up a car dealership. Yeah. Oh, I know yeah and yeah, then yeah. you get into a car and you hear it on the radio and you're like, you're like, Oh, you're like the DiCaprio <laughs> meme. It's like, that, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's so good. Oh, dude. Yeah. That's what I love about like GTA five too. It's like, uh, the moments the 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 conflicting messages on the radio like you'll hear one um radio host being like gang violence is like causing more uprising blah 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 and then the next station will be like people who are against gang violence need their head checked like it'll be like these two competing voices over like what the narrative of the game is (laughs) it's like commentary on like almost like a parody of like fox news and cnn like just the conflicting sides i love that kind of shit (laughs) everything at the end of the day is so fucking ridiculous though man (laughs) yeah it's uh the, the rockstar games especially sometimes it feels like like parody on top of parody like there's there's like layers to that shit do you think we're gonna get gta 6 in our lifetime fuck at this rate in our our lifetime yeah (laughs) feels like it's never coming it feels like the fucking eglinton line i think it'll be (laughs) (laughs) i guarantee you i I think it'll be out by by 2030 before 2030 i think i think people will be playing it and it'll be on ps5 what was the the initial date that was supposed to be like when was it actually like initially when they first announced it when were they aiming to get it out i don't know they've been reselling the last one for over 10 years though like just on different yeah they made so much money from just the online yeah and there's all these different communities so i think they're just like hey if we're still making money off of what's the this rush? thing that's already done let's just keep printing it again yeah. and if it ain't, if it ain't these idiots are it. gonna buy it yeah you fuck <laughs> so we're the problem <laughs> they realized that they yeah. were making so much money off of gta 5 they're like oh wait we don't need to make another game like, yeah, we're making our just... money Keep making why, why new spend digital, money to make yeah. more money when we don't have to do that? <laughs> we'll just we make just make more money. new digital collectives or whatever you need. Like crazy nuts, Sean. Though I so want to hear about KOTD. Pat, you can say what you're going to say, but I need to hear about Blackout. Okay, yeah, we can get in that. What, what, what were you going to say, Pat? Yeah, last note on the gaming thing. Um, GTA Six is currently speculated to come out next year between April and March based on information from a investors call from take two basically they're expecting uh you know big moves with their stock and everything and if they're predicting that then it's likely that they're expecting the game to come out then and with the way that investors and shit go with the AAA gaming industry now they can't afford to not release it on time so i would say probably yeah around that time i just remember with cyberpunk it was such a big thing and then it just fucking flopped. <laughs> oh man dude. the marketing is dirty sometimes <laughs> like, like yeah, I, remember, yeah. I remember guys like going back like i was talking to che about dude. it i was talking with you guys at work about it and everyone's yeah. so fired like, this up. is gonna like, be the best game ever yeah i'm like oh i never heard of this game like you know it should be should be interesting and then it just shit like that's everyone's why you like, always oh, you can't under play. promise like, yeah. over deliver mm-hmm. always yeah, Always. my girlfriend had it on PS4, and that was like the worst, like of the glitches. Like it was, it was so yeah, bad, run. dude. <laughs> the machines just start sounding like a lawnmower. <laughs> like For sure, fuck. Yeah, everything just not rendered. You just like, walking city. around polygons, like. <laughs> <laughs> but Johnny, I could segue this to your question you asked me, but uh, yeah, you asked about uh, KOTD Blackout, which is like one of the biggest battle rap events that happened in Canada in the last couple of years. And uh, this happened the other week and long story short, um, 
there's this uh, battle rapper named Geechee Gotti. He's like one of the best in the world. Straight from Compton. Basically a real life uh, character from San Andreas. <laughs> Could never cross the Wild. border. They fucking um, did all this stuff. Paid thousands of dollars of lawyer fees. And now he's got a temporary passport. He came out in the main event at one of the nights. And it was fucking awesome. Because uh, just, uh, you know, I've been around this scene for like the past 10 years and I've met some of my favorites and he, except for him, cause he could never cross over. And it was just special. It was sick. And like a lot of people came out like from not only like Toronto, like people travel from like New York and like, I talked to like some people so in wild. Canada. They just like, I'll drive throw five hours away. Cause like, they're like, Oh, when am I going to see Geechee Gotti in person to fucking do his shit? And it's just like authentic, like, fucking what you would think uh a cali gangster is and oh man it was fucking sick and uh i love the dude he's he's awesome yeah the photos look unbelievable yeah and um actually you met a couple of people uh when you came out in ottawa like joey gambello who you had on this show as well and uh pepe as well pepe it was his first time on like a bigger stage where he's been killing it in the underground for a bit but then whatever covid kind of killed the industry in a way and now it's kind of growing back so like he got a long overdue shine to be on a big (laughs) stage which was cool and yeah it was just a a great vibe and uh, when those videos come out uh, I'll I'll definitely be sharing them and stuff it's uh, just such a unique art form and even to go for full circle uh, a lot of the stuff you were talking about like with comedy reminded me of what these guys do too of just their nerves like prior to it and stepping out there but then again like all of a sudden they, them getting in that flow state and even like to to go to a thing that jared said like some of these guys they kill it and i'm like oh how do you feel and it's like oh i don't remember it like yeah man it's the no, blackout no. of performing pun intended <laughs> yeah crazy. i was gonna say yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's like, another like i look at what they do and i go like how the fuck like you're doing like stand-up but it's more aggressive it rhymes it's clever and it's directed at a person who's going to do it right back at you do you know and you're kind of like unprepared with what they're going to say about you yeah. and then you have to think of something in the second like it's like it's like a, they do comedy roast battles all the time but i feel like it's the professional version of a roast battle well i was gonna mm. say none of it's like pre predetermined right like it's just it's like freestyle no well, it's kind of like a mix. So uh, like at this high level, they know their opponent and they'll prep a lot of like it almost partly yeah. it turns into a writing competition. But the guys at the top, top level, they're going to be able to listen to what you say and then start their next round. And be like, oh, you said this and blah, blah, blah. And some of it yeah. is just fucking alien shit. And um, and Johnny, you know, Sharon as well, too. Um, mm. He's open, which is it's very like interesting to me where he's he's open about like uh, his uh, autism as well. Mm-hmm. And where you talk to him, you don't really know it. But I guess he has some like social tics and stuff. But again, he has the most crazy fucking hyper focused brain I've ever met in a person to the point where I'm almost like feel like when i'm watching him perform i'm like this isn't human like i can't compute what you're doing you're taking the information that somebody's saying to you turning it into a punchline everything rhymes and it's just like all in like a matter of like 30 seconds and it's the the most clever shit i've ever heard like i would take me a a week to write that line out like i'm like what the fuck that was like pat when pat and i would hang out with 11 and he would just like freestyle in front of us. And we were just like, what? Like, like both how? of us would just look at each other. Like what's Dude, happening? How you like, doing this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, he would like, he would like flow in and out of like something really complicated. Right. Like just uh, one second, it's like a relatively straightforward rhyme scheme and then just boom. And, it, and you can almost see on his face, like the, 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 the joy of like, that was fun. Like, I yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Like, he goes, ah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. He gets all excited about almost it. Almost like <laughs> he's moving so fast he doesn't know what's gonna Whoa. hit next. But it, he's yeah. like, oh, shit, I just said that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure yeah, that's I, like in comedy too, when you're doing crowd work as well. That's, like, that's uh, what I was just gonna say. Yeah, it's like yeah. uh to, to add on to what Jared, what Jared is asking. Like it I think battle rap and comedy is is totally like that. You come in with your kind of pre-planned right. rhymes about like the opponent, but but you're totally off the cuff, like 
in the moment Mm -hmm. you think of something that the the other guy is wearing or or somebody that he brought with him that you can even fit in and in the moment while you're saying it you realize that what you're thinking about that guy who came with him rhymes with one of the Mm -hmm. things that you're going to say next and then it just all comes together and i think it's the same with comedy if you have you know you got your planned different uh like major beats to your routine yeah yeah you're you're gonna have opportunities for crowd work that maybe even work perfectly with mm-hmm. what you're talking about and think, change uh, the joke which is always amazing. exactly yeah, yeah i think yeah. Uh, andrew, andrew schultz is really good with that like he'll he'll do crowd work and then come back to that person during yeah, his bit yeah and yeah. it's just like you can see that he is happy that it's it's almost like yeah. it's almost like he's up there like this shit's right in itself like you yeah know, it's yeah crazy. i call that shit like word magic like it's basically like you uh the best crowd workers will talk to someone over here and then they'll go into a bit that's related to the thing that they talked about and then they'll start talking to somebody over here and then they'll get some information and then they'll go into a bit that they're talking about and then magically at some point they will through their own jokes they will find a a a crossover point between those two random people and they will bring that point together right and it just makes the whole audience go like what like what did we just watch like that was fucking remarkable and it takes like years of doing that to really perfect like okay i'm gonna leave that alone i'm gonna make them forget that we were even talking about that and then bring it right back to the front of your mind and it's just I like, like the word magic baffling. too that you said because sometimes it's just like mm. even the timing of the unpredictable timing is perfect. Yeah. There's one yeah, of the yeah. most um yeah. famous punchlines in battle rap, and I forget the setup, but it kind of uh the the ending rhymed with what the guy was like kind of flowing with. But uh it's on on one of the biggest leagues, it's called the URL, and the guy uh the guy's dad was in the 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 crowd and he just goes, Hey, big Gerald. And uh, his dad goes, yes, sir. And he just ends it with, that's how you talk to your son. And then, then, like, it rhymed with everything that he had set up. And just this crowd of, like, a thousand people just roars, like, ah. (laughs) <laughs> like just oh, fucking man. owned <laughs> that was like the thing i love about like uh watching sharon battles too is the one that he did with like the flowers where he's like ah, rapping yeah. rapping and then he, the someone boys. hands him some flowers and then he goes to hand it to a girl and he does this whole like love poem to her and then she's looking at him all like, oh, like, oh, this is so unexpected. And then he goes, psych, I never buy flowers for God. And he like yells at her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the whole crowd just goes like, what the fuck? But it's like, that's the character. It, that's what the character right. would do in that mm-hmm. moment. And that's what's yeah, so rewarding about years, it. For years, that girl was like kind of like, a, she's part of like was part of our crew for a while but she mm-hmm. was always in the background and all the internet like she she became like uh the battle rap sweetheart like the girl the hot girl in the crowd or whatever and like uh sharon for many battles ahead was kind of like setting up like uh just like in a fake way that they're they have a relationship and shit <laughs> so he did that poem and uh it ended like again i for, i wish i remember the rhyme scheme but like he's about to give her flowers and she's just like oh this is so nice and just psych i never buy flowers for cunts and oh like the crowd I, just I, I, explodes i almost, I almost want to find it oh man this is so savage <laughs> <laughs> I kind of love the unhingedness of it though <laughs> this is kind of like what it drives me yeah there's a the battle rap scene is it's a different beast man i feel like uh I, I think some people that like it's too intense. You watch mm-hmm. some of it and it's like and it's like, oh, these guys are so mean. Like <laughs> they're going really going at each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but it's yeah, like yeah. the funny thing is like what people don't see on the YouTube videos is right when the video's like done, big hug, they're yeah, at yeah, the yeah. bar, right. they're right. buying each other's shots. They're going, that then, was great, man. Yeah. Like it's wrestling. It's literally wrestling. Yeah, right, yeah, right. It is. Yeah, it's, it's, word all, wrestling. it's all entertainment. Yeah. Yeah, just all promo. Like, if wrestling was only the interview promos, that's what Battle Rap right. is. <laughs> I'm trying to find this. He's so young in this video. Okay. Are you finding Sharon? <laughs> yeah, I want it. Yeah, I want it. I got it. Also, Sh- Sharon's uh, kind of like, I guess, the leader of Canada right now. And he's been on, like, nine seasons of Wild and Out on MTV and everything. A, a guy yeah. from Ottawa, a little nerdy yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah. And again, just alien brain and like, oh man. <laughs> Buddy, Sharon is oh, insane. I, I'll never I forget the, the BET cipher he did after oh, like, they didn't incredible. let him go on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that blows me away. every. I, I keep going back to that every couple of years. 
It's oh so shit! Wild. So this guy he's battling to is blind as well. Oh, oh yeah. If there's you want to hear some amazing blind jokes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, no! You want to talk you about my play to win shirt? That ain't something I'm certainly. Been- oh, you know what's happening is it's playing through my uh, my speakers. There we go. You guys hear it? Which one of your faggot friends told yep. you which shirt I was wearing? Oh. <laughs> hey yo, you want to talk about my fake girlfriend? Well, I'll address the issue. Let's go. Yo. Dear Laura Tarzi, yeah. we've been through some powerful stuff. It was yeah. love at first type, wow, it was lust. I don't defend you when people clown you too much, so I finally bought you flowers for once. Psych, I never bought flowers for cunts. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Her face. Shout out to Laura Tarsi. She's married, <laughs> got kids now. <laughs> This was like <laughs> eleven years ago. That video. Oh man! So, but that was that was that all planned? Like, did you, was she like? She wasn't in on it. Oh wow! Okay, yeah, he just did that. <laughs> um, he unreal. he made a decision as an artist. This is the risk I'm going to take. Yeah. This girl is beloved in this community, and I'm going to diss her to her face. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and it's going to be hilarious. We're all going to have a good time and laugh about yeah. it later. You know? Wild. Like risk like that. Also, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say. Also, that guy uh, standing next to her, going <laughs> yeah. with that reaction. He was episode one of the Creative Imbalance. He's a no Toronto rapper named uh, Mindbender. Mindbender. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's one of my my uh, my uh, one of the first artists I met when I moved to Toronto. Hell yeah! That's the great yeah. thing too about podcasting. Eh? You just get to like keep in touch with like people yeah. that you meet right like that's what i love about it too is like you get these like when do we have time like this usually in our like schedule to like sit down and just shoot the shit for an hour yeah yeah man no that, uh, northman shit is like it's my favorite man yeah <laughs> like, i love it i just know going into it we're just gonna have a laugh and just like shoot let the loose shit and... and catch up with the boys man like yeah, dude. you know because yeah. yeah we're all i mean i guess the three of us are in toronto but johnny's in ottawa and it's like yeah we all got fucking lives we're all adults we all have conflicting schedules i mean even to get this done right like it's fucking gotta book it weeks in advance yeah yeah it does. <laughs> yeah, we changed the time like, oh, man. a million times. times i appreciate it though guys like yeah for real like making being able to all come together it's very rare that i think that you can get like a group of people to all agree on the same oh, time frame and we're all happen to be available you know mm-hmm. oh one That's more thing too thing. I, was, I was gonna say um Andrew Packer is a comedian who really taught me about like uh, going into a room like the uh, like when you're there for a show and just like reading the room before you've even stepped on stage, like looking mm. at like how what's what's the decor in here? Like, what do people look mm. like? What are they talking about? Like, what are you overhearing? And he like picks up on all of that. And right before he gets on stage, he's already formulated like a joke that he's going to start his set off with. Mm. That's mm. very obvious to everyone. And I was like, that is smart because like, that's you not really like being too married to your material that you feel like you need to just Mm. do your material. You're trying to create an environment that's a good time for the people at this show so that they come and see you again. Right. The same thing that Andrew Schultz was doing about like making jokes about Toronto. He wants to make sure that when you see him in Toronto, Mm. you know that it's going to be a good time. Mm -hmm. I I, I feel like. That's pr- that's probably a really good strategy as a comedian to open with something like that because mm. you're you're kind of like when you first come on stage, there's this overall kind of vibe of like, okay, let's see what this guy's got. Like everybody's right. yeah, kind yeah. of you know they're they're kind of almost uh, like a little judgy. Almost. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's like, it's like, it well, you paid. You, all... you want to have a good time, exactly. right? Yeah, like, yeah. The movie and sucks. It, you're like, this totally. sucks. <laughs> yeah, you and think I, you're I, funny? Let's yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you if you're funny. <laughs> yeah. I think um, as a performer, that kind of puts you on the back foot. And if you were to open with something like, you know, you walk out on stage, mm-hmm. they're, they're like, oh, yeah, give it up for this guy. And you come out and then and then you're, they, everyone's waiting for you to start. And you're like, man, the the lights kind of suck in here. Eh? Or that's just like some shit that like it, almost everyone, everybody can kind yeah. of relate to. They're like, yeah, I, I noticed that when I came in. It's almost like it's like, oh, yeah, we're the same. And like now you can start and there's less of a right. yeah. there's less Common of a ground. wall. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like if you can find a common ground early on that's actually funny, I mean, that's going to endear the crowd to you even like in a subconscious way cuz they're like, yeah, yeah, I actually uh I thought about that too when I came in here. Like <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, when or maybe can... they didn't notice and they'll think it's funny because Yeah. Of that. But when you can put into words like some, what somebody's been thinking 
like mm. for them in a way mm. like people love that right and that's going to just like draw them in closer to you yeah makes it hella relatable that's what we're I really at. like uh mark norman for that i feel like he does so oh, much ob- observational stuff and then this the bits that he do it's it's either <laughs> Either you've thought of it, but not in the in a way that that's that's that funny, or you haven't thought of it, which usually makes it even more funny. Yeah, and the he, delivery is just so like, yeah, comedy. Like <laughs> it, it really he's works. One of my favorites, <laughs> really. man. I love him. <laughs> yeah, me too, dude. Oh, it's so good. I think uh, I got Andy here, yo, boys. Um, I'm gonna shout out your social media for people are watching. Go follow Pat at Fatrick Two Eyes uh at the creative imbalance for sean check out his podcast incredible guests that he's had on so far and even more to come um and at bronx seven coming to a theater near you <laughs> there yes <laughs> yeah. we're gonna manifest greatness with this podcast boys <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> let's go yeah to go full circle like we're either gonna make greatness or we're just gonna die right yeah, we're gonna yeah. Die. Right, boys? <laughs> you know is that the name of the episode? We're all gonna die. <laughs> we're all we're just gonna fucking die. I don't die. know if anyone will listen to it. Yeah, what do we call oh, this man. episode? Like, what's the what's the one word that we get from this episode? Death. Death. I think, <laughs> Death I think uh, Wendy Williams on the thumbnail. Uh, I, I think we all. talked a lot about flow state, and we kept kind of circling around that issue. Mm. I think I think that's probably like at the core of a lot of things we talked about were yeah. things that were maybe flow state adjacent, like battle rap and stuff like that. Yeah, I like mm. flow state. Yeah, or maybe just was, slow. Definitely, that's slow. a good slow. theme, like throughout the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Before F L O W. Before you forget, Johnny, <laughs> you need the thumbnail. You want us to draw? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta go. <laughs> just hold it. <laughs> <Yeah, on>. Nice, <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> I like how you did the rock eye. Like, hold it. Yeah, hold it. Me, I'm I was always like jealous smiling, of people. And I was like, oh shit, do. I gotta get angry too. Let's let's start straight to thugging. You know? I had to I had to practice that a lot when I was a yeah, kid. Yeah, it hurts really when I try to do it. I can't do the other one. I can do this side, but not the other one. Bro, same. Yeah, it's that's the one side business for me. Okay, let's yeah. do one more because I have my green screen on for that. We'll do. Wait, let me. What's a good this? I gotta think of. Maybe I'll what, do this. What, what? Throw everybody off. Can we do? <laughs> yeah. we do one? I like it. One this way? <laughs> Individual. Someone, someone should do this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is it. This is what we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, there we go. All right. For, yeah, the two is as great. <laughs> two oh, All man. right, boys. Enjoy your Thanksgiving holidays. Yeah. Uh, Happy Thanksgiving, guys. It's always Cats a pleasure, soon. guys. This hour is just by so fast. That flies by. We'll yeah, do another thanks, one guys. soon, eh? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. We'll do this again. 114. <laughs> it's only yeah, on no, force. No. 400. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's go. Yeah. I'll see you there. I'll, I'll see, see you guys in January. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's when I'll be at 400 for sure. <laughs> Later, boys. See you guys. You've been listening to The Johnny Rogers Show. New episodes air every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.